Hello, and welcome to the Built on Air podcast. Built on Air is a regular podcast where we talk with everyday people and learn about the amazing things they are doing with Airtable. Today's podcast is sponsored by OpenSide, the leading solutions provider for Airtable customers. Check out OpenSide.com to learn more about their products and services that can take your Airtable usage to the next level. Use promo code BUILTONAIR to receive $20 towards any product purchase. Today, our host Zoe talks with, well, me. My name is Ali Alosa. I'm a marketing manager at a heavy-duty truck dealership in New England. But I'm also an artist and total computer nerd. Since discovering Airtable about two years ago, I've used it to track and automate processes in the workplace such as travel requests, paid time off requests, and more. In this episode, Zoe and I discuss one of the bases I've set up for the dealership I work at, our inventory management base. This base helps our salesperson stay up to date on our current and ordered inventory. They can filter through units to find the truck they're looking for, communicate about what they're selling, and even email information to customers. Hey, Allie. Hello. Built on Air. Thanks for chatting with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, So I guess just to start... Tell us a little bit about what you're currently doing. You're doing a lot of Airtable work uh, with your current job. So where are you and and what do you do? Well, I am in New England. I'm from New Hampshire. Currently, I'm in Vermont right now at one of our locations. I work for uh, a family-owned truck dealership, uh, New England Kenworth. It's been my family business, actually. Uh, My grandfather... Uh, great grandfather started it. So it's been part of my life for a really long time and kind of just got sucked up into it after college and never planned on that, but I'm loving it. It's There's something really gratifying about working with family. Um, so my dad, and, and I was, excuse me, I'm going to back up for a second. Um, I was trained as a fine artist. I got my Bachelor of Fine Arts at UNH. Um, but instead of kind of going directly into the fine art world, I started working for the family, uh, doing a lot of advertising, marketing stuff. I get to use my Photoshop knowledge a lot, so that's great. Um, but it kind of became clear because we expanded recently um, that we needed to, uh, to kind of pull in the reins and get uh, best practices going across all of our locations. Um, Because before it was kind of just one-offs like, oh, put a policy here, policy there. And now we're bigger than we were before. So Airtable has really helped us to kind of consolidate all of our policies and practices and um, help a ton of different workflows across the board. Awesome. So, how how kind of did you realize that you, you know, being a fine artist, right, and kind of being in the world where, like, you know, maybe math and systems is very, like, you know, it's 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 very foreign, you know, um, kind of to at least all the, the fine arts majors that I knew in college. You're sort <laughs> of a unique uh, example of someone who's also kind of obviously, you know, has this kind of knack for systems. So how did you realize that? Were you always interested or was it just... Uh, you know, tell us how yeah. fine artists get into, you know, systems and logistics. That's a great question. Um, and it kind of started from when I was really, really young. Um, my dad was a total computer nerd. Um, he was like, you know, taking them apart and building them when he was really young. Um, he went to UNH as well for computer sciences. So I kind of grew up like learning a lot about Um, like computers and programming and how all that worked. I was like building my own website when I was like fifth grade with my dad's help. Um, So I've always been really interested in it. And he actually owns a software company um, where he creates, it's called Dealer Alert. Um, It's uh, interfaces with different dealerships uh, management systems to shoot out email alerts whenever certain things happen. Like if somebody changes a price code or if, they sell apart or whatever. Um, so that's kind of been my foray into that kind of world. Um, so my dad and I have gotten really close working together. And he actually is the one that found Airtable after I was trying to make Excel do all of these things that it couldn't do. Um, he was like, oh, wow, I just found this. And I kind of just took off and went running with it. Awesome. Um, so 
for those of our listeners, and I guess myself too, who may not totally be familiar with the the challenges of running a trucking company and establishing best practices, what are some kind of, you know, problems that you guys are facing or what's unique to the industry that you really needed to develop a system to solve? So um, unique to most like dealerships, I guess, is um, having some sort of inventory management system. Um, We have a system within I'm sorry, I totally just lost the word for it. <laughs> um, um, we use DSI, which is a um, a QM-based uh, Linux system. Um, a lot of dealerships use that kind of thing, but it's difficult to work with, difficult to train people on how to use it. Um, so Airtable kind of stepped in and let us put that data in an interface that is easier to see easier for people to learn how to use. Um, Just trying to really make sure that everybody across the board is following the same directions. Um, I'm sorry, that's not really answering your question. Oh, no, that's great. I think it it really is, um, you know, I imagine you guys as a trucking company, are you guys um, really are you storing things and then shipping them? Or is it just pickups? Or I'm just totally curious about like, obviously you need to have all of this data to like, you know, it's like the, the, um, you know, real life problem of like, if one train is going at 60 miles an hour from the East and the other one, right. But on like a huge scale, I imagine. So just curious about like what, you know, you have this sort of like black hole, you know, uh, QM base DSI thing, but then what are all of the problems you're, you're kind of trying to solve to just run this business? Okay, so just to back up a little bit of something I probably should have said first is no worries. <laughs> um, so we are full uh, dealership. So just like you would go to to buy a car, mm-hmm. um, we're like that for b- big eighteen wheelers. Oh, okay. So, so you guys are selling these big trucks. Amazing. Exactly. So we have we've got sales parts service. Um, got a. Uh, uh, eight locations. Okay. Um, and of those five are selling locations. So we are selling these trucks out of five locations. Um, and then the other ones we have parts and service. Um, and just as you can imagine, I mean, when you've got eight locations, eight different like, uh, mindsets on how to do something, right. You've just been trying to lay out, you know, different paths that people can take that, are easy and uh, easy to uh, maintain and enforce as well. Um, so everything from um, when a salesperson takes a deposit on a truck, uh, letting the the rest of the team know that that truck is sold, um, that's a huge one. Um, uh, leads and customer management, um, that's another big thing. Um, and Airtable has helped with a lot of that. Cool. So, and, and I imagine too, it's, it's really complex because you guys, not only are you selling the trucks, you're doing the service, you have to have all of this inventory. Um, obviously I'm not very familiar with trucking or truck parts, but I can imagine that's like just kind of insane to manage. Um, Mm -hmm. how did you, how kind of, was it, you know, it's a family business Does, is it still family that owns or operates each location? Um, Or is it, you know, I, I, I'm curious too about the, the kind of family, family dynamics and all of this. Like you said, it was awesome, but also I imagine people are very comfortable with, with being frank about what they think is the best way to do something. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there uh, definitely still a lot of family in the business. Um, I work with, both of my grandfathers right now, and that's really great on both sides of my family. Um, my aunts are involved, my dad's involved, my brother, um, cousins, everybody. So yeah, it's it's difficult sometimes, <laughs> but um, it's it's definitely gratifying. Uh, there's something different about being able to go to work and see your family member every day, so that's nice. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. No, that's, that's awesome too, that you guys kind of, um, 
really have seemed to have like found like a really successful niche, right? And you're like, we can still be family. We'll eat dinner together or whatever. But also like, I can see you at work and be honest and figure things out. So when you guys realized that you kind of needed to do this, this system overhaul, you mentioned at first you were kind of starting in Excel to try and manage all this stuff and make it more accessible. Um, what was that kind of whole just process like in terms of bringing everyone together to determine these best practices? How did you facilitate that? Um, well, we started, uh, we held monthly executive meetings um, where it's basically like my whole family around a round table. Awesome. Um, but no, there's also um, a, a couple other key players that are very important, obviously. Um, and just kind of had to identify, and we're still in the process of doing this, identifying where the problem areas are and what we can put in place to help that along. Um, I think one of the biggest ones was we started with the inventory management. Um, and once we found Airtable, and kind of just took off with that. Uh, we started moving everything over to it from um, our travel requests, like booking uh, flights and rental cars and everything like that. We have a whole system for that now through Airtable forms. Um, and everything from that to our paid time off, we do through Airtable as well. Um, so we just, every time we identify a problem, generally speaking, I'm like, I can fix that with Airtable. Right. You're like, give me, you know, a day or two, and then I'll send you a link to a base. Yeah. So obviously you have this great systems acumen. Your dad is, you know, um, a like computer, total computer nerd at heart. Um, is, was everyone else kind of immediately on board with, with switching to Airtable or did you have to, you know, give some nudges? That's a great question. Um, Yes, for the most part, everybody's been really excited about it. Um, I held a meeting with our sales director um, when I first discovered Airtable. It was back in December 2017. Um, and she presented it to him and said, hey, I think this will really work. And he was like, do it. So we held a webinar and trained all of our sales guys. And from there, it's just kind of taken off. Um, other than that, I've moved a couple other people onto. Airtable as well, and they don't even want to use our intranet anymore. They're just like, nope, I want everything on Airtable. I don't even want to bother with anything else. So it's been a, it's been highly uh, well recepted. That's awesome. Um, and then, so are you sort of in charge of, you know, do you guys have sort of now a? I know that everything is a work in progress. Do you guys have sort of a dedicated, you know, like training documentation and program? Are you leading that, or is it just kind of a collaborative type? effort? That's a great question as well. Um, I've kind of been leading that. I kind of, when I introduce somebody to a base, I show them how to move around and I do everything I can to make it as easy as possible. And I usually come up with a, um, a work instruction sheet with screenshots and whatnot, but I am working on like an overview of Airtable for, you know, the everyday guy that I'm trying to bring on to show how it works. Um, because it's a little different, you know, if you're looking at Airtable's uh, documentation, it's very thorough and it's great, but it's very geared towards creating the base rather than navigating it. And for most of my uh, use cases, I don't need anybody to be creating anything and I don't want them to be, you know what I mean? Right. I just need them to be adding the records where they need to go. And it's hard to explain sometimes to somebody how or why they need to to put something in that particular cell um, or field rather but absolutely yeah you make a great point where it, it is hard because when you you know you've built something and it, and it is totally custom right it's not like oh hey here's this you know sales management software we have like here's a link on how to add a lead or whatever right you're you're like well I determine that so I I need to create those links um, you know or documentation or whatever for people to reference Mm -hmm. There's no really easy like, oh, yeah, check here. Here's how you do it. Like Airtable's not going to know like, hey, this is the way this formula works. So if you don't do this, you're going to get confused and it's going to look weird. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, it is sort of this this other additional sort of step that um, especially since, you know, Airtable, like you said, everything is sort of like always in progress and always evolving. So it's it's like, well, I'm, you know, I have to explain to someone how to do this, but then they give me feedback and just by the wonderful kind of 
flexible, you know, jello like nature of Airtable, right? You can adjust that. And then you're like, oh, well, now I have to update how I train people on it. <laughs> so it's this like never ending cycle. Yeah. Um, so you've mentioned that you're basically kind of putting everything in Airtable now um, as much as you can. And um, the base that you're going to show us in a little bit is your current inventory base. But um, do you want to talk for a couple minutes about some of the, the kind of um, other systems that even though we won't peek inside, you have one, like you said, for, you know, paid time off, for travel, um, all those kinds of things. Like how many different bases do you kind of have in rotation right now? Um, I would say we probably have about 20 that wow. are thoroughly used. Um, a couple of them, they're just for me. I like I write our newsletter. I use I have a base for our uh, content submissions for from employees um, to I hold all of our final copy and photos in there. Um, I have another one for uh, trade show requests. Whenever we have an event, uh, there's a form that we, we use Jot form and integrate it using Zapier. Um, uh, there's a form that a salesperson can fill out to say, hey, yes, I want the tent, I want tables, I want this, this, this. And using the blocks feature, we uh, create like a pick ticket um, for, the, for our admin assistant to go down and grab those items and load them into the vehicle to go to the show. Um, so tons of different things. Um, also, we just started using one for our executive committee meetings where we uh, maintain our minutes and action items. That, that's one's evolving pretty quickly, and that's really fun. Cool. So, yeah, basically just everything. Airtable is like the wonderful, like, one-size-fits-all solution. Um, so I guess now would be a great time to go ahead and share your screen, and we can peek into the current inventory base. Okay. Perfect. So what we're looking at right now is actually our company intranet. Um, I started here just to show you how our sales guys can view it. So they have uh, everyone in the company has a username and password for this website. We use uh, MyHub is the name of the company we use. I highly recommend it. It's very um, affordable. Awesome. Um, unlimited users, unlimited storage, and it's it's great. Um, so they can log into the intranet and go to this page here where our, the entire base is embedded. Um, we'll go to the view larger version here. So this is our inventory base and every record here represents a, a unit. So one truck, uh, this is the stock number for the truck. We have all of our specs here. Um, and what's really cool about this is I mentioned DSI, which is our Linux system. Um, all of these specs for Kenworth at least are automatically loaded whenever we get uh, a new unit. PACR, which is the parent company of Kenworth, they load these specs into the system for us. And then my father wrote a program uh, using the API for Airtable that automatically injects these specs into Airtable every two hours. Awesome. So that includes pricing. So like if a truck has, uh, they call it a, a PDI, some trucking lingo for you, pre-delivery inspection. Um, so for instance, like when that happens, the charge for that automatically hits Airtable and everybody can see that that's been done for the truck. Awesome. So like really not a ton of like manual data entry in terms of, you know, copying and pasting things from DSI. Very cool. Yeah, yeah we have quite, uh, the manual entry is really only limited to the attachments right now. Everything else is uh, automatic every two hours, which has been so helpful. Um, so we have all of our attachments we put on this more tab just to avoid anything, like if, if something were to go wrong with the program and it were to wipe out everything, we still have it on a separate table. Right <laughs> so on. Lose everything. Um, and then um, the coolest function though, I think, and the one that is used the most is from our intranet. We can go down to this little Airtable form that we have. 
and I can tell everybody that I've taken a deposit on a unit. Let's just go back and do the first one, 255293. And once I hit submit, this is a copy of the actual base, so I won't receive the email, but it would send out an email to everybody and say, hey, Ali's taken a deposit on this unit. And once I hit refresh, um, it gets marked with a little purple line. So now everybody can see right now that that's been taken. Somebody has purchased this unit. Awesome. So that's been really helpful for the sales team to know, you know, when they're looking through this list, they're like, oh, okay, someone's already taken this one. So that's great. And we can go over and take a look at the actual reservation and see when it was taken, who it was taken for. Um, another really cool feature is um, I love the blocks feature from Airtable. I'm really enjoying it. One thing I really wish it did though was um, made it so you don't have to show all the data in the table. I think that's right. really a problem for a lot of people right now. Um, but this has been really helpful for us with uh, creating these sell sheets for our sales guys. They can just go and print these out if they want to hand one to a customer or we keep an inventory board at each location with these sheets on it. And they're all uniform, they look the same. So it's it's been really nice. Beautiful. Um another cool thing. I'm sorry, now it's not loading. We also keep all of our uh current ads in here. So I can go and look at the one that's running right now that's featuring those units. Um and we have leads as well. I went through, I changed all of my customer names to Sopranos characters. <laughs> um, <laughs> Beautiful. But uh, the, our sales director can assign a lead to a salesperson and then the salesperson can come back and show, hey, I talked to this person on this date, et cetera. Um, so that's been helpful. It's kind of like a really lightweight CRM in a way. Um, not many people have been using it, but we just implemented that. So really, it seems like a lot like sort of the main benefit of this now is that there's like this really awesome kind of transparency thing going on for all of your salespeople. So before you kind of got everything into Airtable, was it a lot harder for everyone to kind of communicate deposits or who they talk to or like, hey, these are the ones that are being featured. Um, like, how are you doing all this before you had it sort of in one spot? Great question. Um, we weren't doing a very good job of it. That's for sure. <laughs> um, and it was always it was kind of an ongoing battle where our, our director of sales would be like, hey, I know there's something out there that can make this easy for us. We just have to find it. And I'm so glad that we did. Um, prior to this, we had been using um, Same Page, which is kind of like a collaboration app. Um, we were very happy with it, but it was more for collaboration rather than like data sharing and storage. Um, so we would just have a folder with, you know, the invoice and the final bill for the truck, which lists all of these specs here. Um, but this puts it in a way where it's, everything right in front of you so that's been really great so yeah before it was just a lot of lots and lots of emails uh sometimes the email wouldn't happen so nobody would know <laughs> right they're like oh yeah i forgot to told you i already sold that truck sorry <laughs> exactly um, no yeah and i think this is this is great too because it it really um you know, something that's sort of, you know, classic when you're expanding to is like, if you're all just in one office, you can be like, hey, Bob, I sold this truck, you know, FYI, right? Just shout it out. But since you guys have so many locations, and you know, obviously, you've just expanded your inventory at each location a lot, it's a lot harder for people to just kind of, you know, remember things, right? As like one off kind of, you know, hey, FYI. Um, I love the kind of conditional coloring you have here just as like a really sort of, um, you know, that purple line does such a great job of like standing out like, hey, this is reserved, uh, but also not being like too, you know, 
just like in your face or over the top. Um, so that's a really nice touch. Thank you. And so how long did it kind of take um, you guys to build this out, uh, you know, from, from starting, you know, committing, okay, we're going to do this in Airtable to kind of having it um, laid out as it is now? Uh, probably took uh, about a week or two um, for my, my dad wrote the program, the, um, the curl function and getting all of the data from DSI into Airtable. Um, and then it took a little while, you know, to go back and make sure that all of our specs were uniform. Uh, that's been a big, huge thing. So like if somebody were to just write pack here instead of pack R, then, you know, that's going to screw up people's filters if they're trying to find something with a specific engine make or color or whatever it may be. So that was a huge project in itself. Um, and still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, probably about a couple of weeks from start to finish. Um, and then we trained everybody up on it and everyone's been using it for about a year and a half now, which is kind of crazy to think of. Um, it's been going really well. And then when a unit is sold, um, that's a whole other part of this process, which has been really kind of cool. Um, we have a zap set up that when we mark a unit as sold on this database, it moves it to our sold database, which I can show you a little bit of if you'd like. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. So this is just a copy of it, just scrubbed version. Right. Um, all the Sopranos buying all the trucks. <laughs> exactly. Um, so when we just started using it so that when a unit is marked as sold, it inserts it with the week that it was marked as sold automatically into the sold database. So it's grouped by week here. Um, every Friday, uh, another zap automatically sends a list of all of the units that were sold for the week to our truck sales coordinator, who then edits it and makes sure it's all right, and then can email it out to our entire company. So he uh, we just started doing this a few weeks ago where every week we get a, a list of everything that was sold for the week before. So that's been helpful because now our parts guys can call up their customers and say, Hey, I know you bought a new truck, like just wondering how it's going. And that's been great. Um, but not only that, but it's helping to uh, kind of force the process along because if somebody has sold a truck and forgot to tell anyone about it, then they're like, Oh, my truck's not listed there. That I got, I should probably let them know so everybody can know that I sold a truck too. So. Right. Like, I want the credit for selling that big exactly. truck. Um, cool. Yeah. And I think also, there, you kind of bring up a great point too about just, um, you know, kind of data management and people. It's really easy to kind of just throw things in somewhere and then you forget about it. And it's only the one person who has to like comb through everything that's like, oh, this is like, formatted incorrectly or people aren't updating their stuff but kind of those you know sort of transparent emails really do a great job of just making sure that everyone you know is aware of their own little part of the process exactly yeah it's been really really helpful um yeah so do you have this inventory, is it just for all of your, your trucks or are you also kind of tracking, you know, like individual parts and stuff like that in the system as well? We are not currently doing that. Um, we very well might in the future. Um, that's been a very heavily uh, just DSI kind of thing. And I think the turnover for that is so high that it might be difficult to capture um, in Airtable. But um, I think we might work towards that eventually. Um, but right now, I think just having this for our sales team has been the most helpful, um, especially just being able to go and see, you know, the gallery view and- Beautiful. You wouldn't be able to make this look so nice with parts. <laughs> right, yeah. And I, and I think too, also, it's like, I'm sure there's, you know, it's like parts have so much little data attached to them. And you said they turn over so quickly, so much volume. It It is sort of um, making that sort of sensical call in between like what is the amount of upkeep it would take versus, you know, the benefit that it gives everyone. Exactly. 
So yeah, and you're right, like just, you know, kind of uh, parts, pictures, not quite the same impact as seeing all of the, <laughs> the trucks, right? Yes, for sure. Very cool. I love it. Um, I think you did such a great job of sort of, you know, and kind of with your dad's like, you know, programming skills, right? You're taking something from a system that's sort of like a, a black box and people aren't loving and putting it somewhere that, you know, can kind of... Uh, you know, allow people to interact more with the data and get more, you know, of what they need out of it, which it's, it's always amazing how many sort of like systems are built by humans, and then they're not really great to like be operated by humans. So um, <laughs> I really love this kind of like elegant solution, right? You're kind of translating it via Airtable into a way that works better for everyone. Exactly. So what is um, sort of the, the next like uh, big sort of systems or Airtable project or whatever you guys are working on? What are you, how are you spending your day today right now? So I am working on a um, whole bunch of different ones. I'm just sorry, I don't <laughs> feel like too many. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I think the, the next big push we're going to be working on is um, an onboarding base. Um, I can't remember who it was on the Airtable community forum, but somebody, a, a regular uh, poster, shared a code that can create multiple records from one record in, via Zapier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think um, our our sponsor, OpenSide, also has like a connector via Zapier where you can do that. So inserting, yeah, inserting multiple records is something that like you would think would be like sort of better baked into what you know is offered by default but yeah just like finding those tools onto air actions or yeah your own code or something to be able to just split all that out how you need exactly so we're trying to figure out using that um you know when 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 we hire a new employee uh sending out those tasks to different people saying hey they need they need their email address set up they need a cell phone, they need um, to be set up in DSI, they need all this stuff. Um, and we're working towards using Airtable to do that and shoot out all the emails to everybody with all the tasks that they need to do. Um, and we currently already do use it to house our employee information once they are hired, but the onboarding process, I think, is our next big process to clean up. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for giving us this like really awesome just I love how the space is laid out it's super easy to understand and um just really great talking to you about your weird like fine arts metamorphosis into like <laughs> systems for a family trucking dealership um very cool where can our listeners go to find you if they want to learn more about you or reach out all right so I have a website it's alialosa.com and that's a L L I A L O S A. Um, it's kind of a hard name to spit out there. We'll uh, include it in the show notes so they can just do a quick click. Excellent. Um, and I am on the Airtable community forum at Needs Admin. Uh, Needs is a New England Auto Dealer Services. That's an acronym. Awesome. <laughs> That's a great acronym. Um, I love acronyms that are also words. So Yeah, it's not bad, right? We, <laughs> we started fun. calling it Nerds Alerts. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Ali. It was really great chatting with you and best of luck with your continued Airtable transformations and your onboarding process and such. Um, and we'll include those links in case anyone wants to check out your, your air table -y things or I guess your, your finer arts type stuff as well. Thank you. And thanks for having me. It's been great. It was a pleasure.